So today I'm going to answer the question that was put on my YouTube channel. Why do you have a mixing desk? You can see this in the on the other camera here. There's a mixing desk with loads of channels, loads of knobs and switches. Why would you bother when we have the convenience nowadays of a digital audio workstation and an audio interface? Well, the answer is you can use an old mixer like this with your digital audio workstation to just give it a bit of colour. So what I've got here is my drum kit set up. I've got kick drum mic, a snare drum mic, and a pair of overheads here, and they go into four channels of my desk. They're actually going into these ones, one, two, three, and four there. So what I've got then is I've got the sends from these going to the four red faders here, these four, so that when I play the drums, when I play the kick drum, you'll see this light light up here. Also, you can see the overheads lighting up, and there's also, I've got a, a mic set up here to record my uh, commentary. So it's all quite complicated, but it'll come out in the wash, I promise. So kick drum and one of the overheads there, snare drum and the other overhead, and then the other overheads here. So if I just tap that one, there's number four, and there's number three. There we go. So at the moment, you are hearing the inputs to the digital audio workstation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record these drums on my computer here. Now you need a an audio interface with multiple inputs and outputs to really make use of this. The one I've got here is the Motu 828 Mark II. It's quite old now and you can pick these up on eBay for £150 or something. You know, not much, or $100 maybe. So just checking that I've got my sounds into computer. Yeah, they're all registering here. I'm just going to bring the other camera over here from the mixing desk just momentarily so that you can see the input levels. So just looking at my screen here. You can see stuff happening on the computer. Now, I'm recording it dry at the moment. Now, what that means is I'm not using any processing or any um, sort of inflated levels on the mixing desk. Though if you had a, an engineer with you, you could set the input gains on your mixing desk to be really hot to make those drums distort. But that's what I'm gonna do in a minute. So I'm going to quickly record something. Uh, let's just make sure we're there. Yeah, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna record just a beat and then I'm gonna put some other things on as well. So here we go. Now the idea of that was simply to be able to loop it afterwards on the computer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just listen to these computer um, drum sounds live as I recorded them. Now you can probably hear that there's stuff being panned at the moment, like the bass is on the left and the snares on the right and all of that. Now, the reason for that is because I recorded them in order to send them to individual outputs of my mixer. So I'm gonna do that now. So if I bring, this is Logic Pro 7 I'm using, but really any sort of digital audio workstation will work fine with this, in this sort of um, process. So if I just focus the camera on here, at the moment, you can see that I've got four channels here, one, two, three, and four, which are still in record. I'm just gonna switch those off now. There we go. Now, I've got them, at the moment, sending to the main outputs of my mixer, which appear on the first two channels of my mixing desk over here. But I'm going to assign these now to different outputs of my digital audio workstation, which are then connected to inputs of my mixing desk. So I'll just set those to there. Now, going back to the desk, the drums are now going to appear. Just straighten the camera there. The drums are now going to appear on, so I'm going to take the, 
just going to take that back down there. So I've got my I've taken my drum mics away. I've finished with those. So and now I'm going to listen to these here. So hopefully. There we go. My drums are now appearing. Channel three for kick, four for snare, and then the two overheads on here. So I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to just quickly adjust my start and end points in Logic so I can create a drum loop, and then I can just loop that while I put something else down. So. Now you notice on the mixer at the moment, there's lots of red lights coming on, lots of overload lights. Doesn't matter, we like that. So. So I'll just find my uh, beginning point of the drums, uh, put a little, and just cut that. With any luck, my tempo is reasonably stable. Just find the end. So let's try that. Let's have. A, let's all have a really good laugh at my expense, and see if that tempo is actually steady. Right. So I'll just loop this. <laughs> Okay, that will do me. So I'm just going to loop this round now so that I've got sort of, you know, a couple of minutes of drums. So I'm going to play back now and we're going to have a listen to the channels of the desk and what they do. So there's no, no processing at all on Logic at all. Now, this is where I can start using a bit of outboard reverbs and old school bits of kit. Now, I've got here a whole raft, a whole range of other things. So I'm just going to move the camera ever so slightly back. There we go. Long live the mixing desk. And then I've got a load of kit here which I'm going to just plug in. I forgot to switch it on before I started. There we go. So, I'm going to put the snare drum through a reverb. So, I've got now my conventional auxes here. So, my snare drum is this one here. Now at the moment, the how this mixing desk is wired up to my uh, recorder is that you can't actually hear that reverb at the moment. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of a, a restriction of what we're doing here. But I should, if I just um, play back that, you should be able to hear that through the narration mic that there is reverb. And that's one of my bits of kit up here. In fact, it's the top one, uh, the second to top, it's this one. So I can use any of these bits of kit to record and to mix and to play back. Now, what I've got here as well is the ability to ramp up the input gain to the desk. Now this is nice because what I can do is then get a really crunchy drum sound just by using the analog electronics in the desk. I 
do actually have an issue with fader number three here. Maybe a bit much on that kick drum. And then I can use EQ that's on the channel. On the, each channel of the mixing desk, I can tweak. I've just turned up the top end on those uh, the overheads. I can even cut the bass end off them if I like, uh, just to prevent the uh, the mix sounding all a bit cloudy. Okay, now, now I've got that, I'm gonna put a bit of bass down. Now, my bass guitar, I could either plug it straight into the front of the desk or I could use an amplifier. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my amp. Now, I made a video yesterday about putting uh, your bass straight into the recorder or whether you mic'd up your bass amp, and that's what I'm gonna do. So. Over here, I've got my snare mic, which was my SM58. I'm gonna try using that. So I'm just going to take the mic off the snare drum and I'm going to put it instead onto my the front of my bass amp. Assuming there's enough cable in this thing. Just a quick sound check with my bass will all will be all we need for for um, getting a really nice bass sound. So I've also got to use my headphones in order to record. So switching the snare off. Now if we look at the level meter on the desk on the output there. When I play the bass, you should see a light light up, but actually that's my narration mic. So I've got to work out which of these mics, which of these other channels I used. And actually it was number two, it was the snare here. So I need to re basically record into the computer. Now I could use one of my other bus outputs here. I could try, so just check that that is, yeah that's coming in. So on my bus outputs now, you can see my narration mic, if I clap, you can see that that's my level to going to my recorder. But my bass is now going out on, it's actually going out on two bus outputs. It doesn't matter because I'm actually going to now set up my computer. I just move this. I'm gonna set up my computer now for another track. So I'm going to go to this track uh, and I'm going to have input three and that. Need a little bit more so you can see the output there. Okay so now I'm going to put that into record. Now because I'm using my bass amp and a mic I would therefore have to use a pair of headphones here. So all I do is just plug them into my mixing desk and hopefully all will be well. So let's plug that in there. Now, of course, when you're dealing with a physical mix, you need to make sure that the whoever is recording is happy with that mix. You don't want something that's just sort of, uh, that's too loud in their ears or they can't hear their own instrument. So. Well, coincidentally, that was absolutely spot on. So I'm gonna now press record and I've got my, my stick clicks and my snare so that I can record some bass. I'm just gonna stick on G minor, just nice and simple. So I'm just gonna move the, the um, camera out of the way. You can see above on your screen at the moment, you can see this machine. That's actually recording the entire demonstration. So it's recording the outputs. There you go. And it's also recording my 
narration. So that's what I would then prepare afterwards for this film. Okay, so it's G minor, and then I went to C and E flat. Remember, 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 remember that, remember that. Okay, so my next task is to, now usually what you do is you do your tracking first and then you tinker with your mix afterwards. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to warm up my Vox AC30 that I've got back here. So, I'll just move this other camera so that you can see basically what I'm having to prepare to make this work. So there's my AC30. Let's move my base out of the way. That's the trouble with having all of this stuff in one room is you have to pack away stuff all the time. But you know, pff, it is what it is. So um, get my guitar out. Get some G minor ridge going through there. So I'll just plug into my AC30 over here. So I'm going to use the same mic again. This is the convenience of ba basically tracking by yourself in one room is that you can just use the same SM58 that I used on the bass drum, uh, sorry, the snare drum. So I'll just move this across. And hopefully there'll be enough on the mic lead to enable me to just, not quite, okay. Okay, so. Put that on there. There we go. Now, a word about miking speakers. You get the maximum top end, the clarity of the, the sort of top end of the amp, if you point the mic at the speaker cone itself. The more you move out to the side of the speaker, the darker the sound will be, which you might want. Um, in, indeed, you may, um, when you're recording, you could put two mics on this amp, because there are two speakers, you could put one mic on in the centre of the speaker and another mic on at the edge and record both tracks and then decide which you like. Of course, you know, you, you can go, you can, you can sort of go as far as you like with this really. So, climb spectrum, just double check on the... Right, I'm going to get rid of that reverb because I don't really want to, I want the flexibility to be able to put it on afterwards, basically. So if I now play back that track, now I've got to make sure that that bass is coming through. Now the bass at the moment is feeding my main outputs of the sound card. So. The drums have their individual ones, but the bass is just coming out of the main stereo output. That's fine. That's fine. That's just something that we can, um, just something that makes it uh, easier to sort of track. Okay, so. Put the headphones in. Necessary to put your guitar in tune. Okay, so 
make ready another track. Now I'm still using the same microphone that I had just now, so I've got to make sure I get the right input on my computer. So if I just move the camera over to the computer, you'll see that there's the bass track just here. And I've got my guitar working here. So if I just press record on that, there we go, there it is. So here we go. And that will do for the purposes of this demonstration. So that's my guitar done. So next I've got to move the guitar and the bass to respective channels on my mixing desk. So I've got full control over faders. So let's put that back in there. Nope, it's not gonna go. <laughs> I'll just put it over here. So now I've got to assign the computer outputs, the computer outputs so that I get my bass going on to maybe this fader and my guitar onto this one perhaps. So I've got to make sure that I've got my stereo output here um, and I'm going to move the guitar to another pair of outputs of my digital audio workstation, well, my bass and my guitar. So, just to make things easy, I'm just going to loop a bit of stuff. So, my drums are coming in here, I need my bass and my guitar to come in here. So my bass and the guitar are feeding the same output at the moment because I haven't panned the outputs of my computer here. They are both at the moment panned centrally. I don't know if you can see that here. The pan control here is central at the moment for my bass and I want to move that all the way to the left and then this all the way to the right. This is just for the purposes of feeding your computer tracks via your audio interface into your mixing desk. So what we have now, if I just uh, switch off all these channels, just apart from the bass and the guitar, I should now have one of them on both faders. Well, have one on each fader. Okay, so I'll take the loop off now so it actually sounds not like somebody with three legs dancing to seven, eight time. And there we go. So I've now got full control over kick drum, snare drum, overheads, both left and right, bass guitar and guitar. Now, the number of outputs available on your digital audio workstation may only be four or eight or something. I've actually got 10 outputs on this one, but I'm using already six of them. Now you can buy other things. If I just show you this, um, this other bit of kit that I've got here, now, I don't really use this for playback in the studio, but this, this one here, it's the Behringer Ultra Gain 8. It's basically an extra eight channels 
of audio in and out, D2A, that you can hook up to um, a audio interface that has optical ins and outs. That does mean that you can get an extra eight ins and outs, you know, just for tracking. Now, yes, they, they're not the preamps aren't gonna set the world on fire there, but it's a way of getting stuff off, of, off your computer onto a mixing desk. Now, in terms of things like preamps and which ones you should buy, and all, there's just so much to choose from, and it just depends on what you want. It depends what sounds good. I'm quite happy with the sound of this mixing board out of the output of Logic Pro 7 via a Moto 828 Mark II. It just happens to be a combination of bits of kit. Now, what happens then when you're mixing from this? How are you going to prepare this mix? Well, you could mix it back into computer. You could say, okay, well, I'm going to mix this onto two channels of my sound card and then make ready a stereo track on your computer. Now, in order to do that, you've got to be careful that the sound card isn't going to feed itself. You don't want that. So I'm going to try that on my computer over here. If I just move my camera, let's move it down so that you can see the, see that there. So I'm going to make ready a track on here that is going to be a stereo track. Let's make that a, um, make that in stereo. And I'm going to have inputs three and four. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to mute that track. I don't want to, I basically don't want it to feed back and be horrible. So on all my channels now, looking at this mixing desk here, I've got to have my, there's my bass drum, I'm going to have the buttons that now route all of this slot to my first two red faders on the desk here. There we go, so I'm going to take the others down just to so, uh, save sort of, um, well just for clarity. Now I'm just going to press record on here. Now, at the moment, you can see the lights at the top on these two channels. All the other lights, ignore those. This one is your master output. Seven and eight are what are feeding my narration, and six is my vocal mic that, I, that you're listening to at the moment. So it's one and two that we're interested in, leaving the desk here. Now, those two channels, are feeding the two inputs here. They will now be going into the desk, sorry, into the computer, via this. So now when I press go on here, I'm gonna record that mix onto a stereo track here. And there we go. There is a stereo mix now on that channel, which means that you can do your processing, you can do a bit of mastering or master EQ or whatever back on your computer. Now, people are saying, well, you know, but this is an analog circuit. It's gonna be introducing noise. It's gonna be introducing imperfections. It's gonna be introducing goodness knows what. But it is, it is what it is. We basically use this stuff still to get a sort of individual sound with no sort of, um, so that you're not just using new digital technology, you've got the, the analog stuff that works really quite well. I've got to do something about the uh, the fader, that third fader in. That's the trouble with this stuff, it does need servicing. It needs a bit of tinkering and you've just got to make sure that it's going to work. Now, 
just pointing the camera round here, we have got this machine here, the Revox, the Revox A77. Now that is basically a, 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 a recorder that will allow me to essentially record an output of the computer here onto analog tape. Now that's, this is what we, we like this. So now I'm going to put the mix that I just made onto the Revox here. Now we've got a switch on the front here which enables me to monitor what the tape does to the sound. First of all, I'm going to set it to input and you can hear the original mix as it was. Okay, so now I'm going to press record on the tape. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by listening to the input, then I'm going to switch to the output. Now there will be a slight delay because the record head is this one and the playback head is that one. And the tape obviously travels this way and there's a short delay between that head and that head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp the input levels up so you can hear what the tape does to that mix. So here we go. I'm going to set it into record. There we go. And now I'm going to play back the mix but you're going to hear it just off the uh, computer first, then the tape. What happened there, the faders, the meters on here rather, were absolutely right over to the right hand side. So now, I can go back to the beginning and listen back. And here it is, so this is off tape only now. You can hear where I ramp that level up. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, why, why am I bothering to do this? Well, you can hear that all of these different stages, the mixing desk, the, well, the mixing desk on the input to the computer and coming back off and back onto the computer and onto the tape machine and back into the desk again, and then through the speakers. There are so many stages well, where you can get problems, but where you can actually start to really wake up a mix. And there we go. So the Revox does have a part to play.